to be shared, joining the heavenly feast that God has prepared. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Today we shall celebrate the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We begin our celebration. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest hell on earth is to be. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. In Israel, no one was like Moses. He is a prophet and a lawgiver. But Moses himself declares that God will raise a prophet not only like him, but even greater his prophecy finds fulfillment in Jesus. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all people, saying, If prophet like me will the Lord, your God, raise up for you from among your own kin, to him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, 
This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or he speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Paul gives some concrete ways of serving Jesus. While he places no restrictions, Paul believes that unmarried Christians like him can devote themselves entirely to the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose the restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without destruction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light on those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death. Light has arisen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. 
Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It's magandang umaga po muli sa ating lahat. Nito mga nakarang araw, ang ating mga ibanghelyo, ang mga nababasa natin sa misa, ay somehow isinashowcase ang otoridad ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo at yung kapangyarihan ng kanyang otoridad. Kahapon sa ating mga readings, ang object ng kapangyarihan or authority ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ay yung panahon. Yung kwento kahapon, yung habang naglalayag ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo kamsama ang kanyang mga apostoles no, sa dagat o sa laot, ay naging hindi maganda ang panahon. Kaya takot na takot yung mga apostoles niya na baka sila ay malunod. But then the Lord Jesus Christ showed His authority over the natural things and commanded the weather to calm down and be still. At gumanda ang panahon. Such authority, such power in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in our gospel today, the object is more of a spiritual one. The object of the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kung yung kahapon natural, ngayon spiritual. Nakita natin sa ibanghelyo natin sa araw na ito ang encounter ng ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo sa isang taong sinapian ng masamang espiritu. The people were astonished for his thought and as one having authority. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? This was the encounter of Jesus and the unclean spirit. Sabihin na natin yung jablo o yung demonyo. Isa sa kanilang mga encounter. What is very interesting in this encounter, my dear sisters and brothers, are the words of the possessed person. Sabi niya, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? This was only one person, isang tao lamang. Pero narinig niyo yung sinabi niya, what have you to do with us? Ang gulo, ano? Isang tao, pero sabi niya, anong gusto mong gawin sa amin? Hindi sa akin. Sa amin. Bakit kaya ganon? You know, my dear sisters and brothers, I, I have been working in the ministry of exorcism. And in this ministry, we have seen this character of, of the devil whenever it, it works. Ang gusto niyang mangyari lagi sa buhay ng tao, e eh, guluhin ito. Guluhin. He wants to divide the person. Very divisive yung kanyang presence sa buhay ng tao. Kaya nga siguro, ang salita nitong tao sa Ibanghelyo natin sa araw na ito, somehow very divisive. He is one person, but he says, he is an us. Naalala niyo yung, unang yung isang encounter ng ating Panginoong Iso Kristo? Nung tinanong niya, who are you? Tinanong ng ating Panginoong Iso Kristo. Yung evil spirit and the response was, I am legion and we are many. Gulo ano? I am legion and we are many.
tells us that this is how the devil works in our life. It wants to divide us. It wants to scatter us. Ibang nag-iisang tao ka lang, parang feeling mo ang daming, ang daming reality sa iyo. Kristiyano ka lang, pero nakikita mo sa buhay mo, parang ang daming reality sa buhay ko, hindi lang ako kristyano. Magulo, in short. Ganun lagi yung operation, yung modus operandi ng demonyo sa mga buhay natin. O kaya tingnan-tingnan natin yung every time tayo yung naguguluhan sa buhay natin. Baka yung demonyo yan slowly dividing us, making us say, I am legion and we are many. And in this very specific encounter, our Lord Jesus Christ showed His authority to the evil one by commanding him to be quiet and come out of him. At atong nangyari dun sa taong na possessed, from being an us, from being divided, from being scattered, he was able to receive unity, a collection. He was again collected as a person, as a person of Jesus Christ, as a son of God. Na makikita natin kung paano, kung nakita natin kanina paano mag-operate ang demonyo sa buhay natin, makikita naman natin ngayon kung paano mag-operate ang authority ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo against the evil one. If the evil one destroys or divides, our Lord Jesus Christ unites us under His name, under His authority, under His care and His love. Which is a very good use for all of us, my dear brothers and sisters. Because as we can see, we are experiencing many evil in our lives. Kaya matatandaan natin ano, yung mga sitwasyon na kung saan Alam mo kung ano yung dapat gawin, pero hindi mo ginagawa. Very divisive. Alam ko yung gagawin ko eh. Alam ko kung ano yung tama, pero ang ginagawa ka pa rin yung mali. Very divisive. Now, if we put ourselves under the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, under His love, magkakaroon tayo ng unity. Klaro sa atin kung ano talaga ang gagawin at gagawin talaga natin yun. Hindi marami yung identity natin. Kung ako, sabihin ko, kristyano. Ako, kristyano talaga ako. Hindi lamang ako kristyano sa loob ng simbahan. Hindi divisive. Meron kaming simbahan dun sa Manila. And in the church, there were really yung, yung talagang mass goers na nakikita namin every day. Three masses every day yung inatinan. Pagkatapos umatay ng three masses, nagdadasal ng rosary yan. Napakaganda tignan ano, sa loob ng simbahan. Pero magugulat ka paglabas ng simbahan, paglabas mismo ng pintuan ng simbahan, ang unang maririnig mo sa kanilang bibig, mura. Minumura nila yung kanilang kasambahay kasi hindi nasunod yung gusto nila. And you will be wondering, nasan yung tao kanina sa loob? Nasan yung kristyano kanina sa loob ng simbahan? Bakit nag-iba na nung lumabas? Divisive. I and yet us, the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ brings 
unity to who we are, giving us one name, Christian. Yun ang magandang balita sa atin. Our Lord Jesus Christ comes to unite us. Halimbawa na lamang, sa panahon ng COVID, it divides us, ano? Kakaiba itong nakikita ko na ganyan, no? Magkakalayo tayo. Meron pa tayong ganito. And our gospel today tells us, this is a very good opportunity for us to be under the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. To guide us in this struggle. To guide us in this crisis of our life. Be cautious. Bakit? Ang authority ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo meron niyang kalaban lagi sa buhay natin. Meron niyang kalaban lagi. Kahapon nakita natin ano, yung gospel na lulubog yung dapat yung baka, yung hindi maganda yung panahon. At natakot yung mga apostoles ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. They called Jesus Christ to wake up from sleep. Kakaiba yun. Bakit? Kasi itong mga apostoles ng ating, mga, ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo are fishermen. Sanay sila sa dagat. Pero natakot sila, no? At alam nyo kung sino yung ginising nila? Karpintero. Anong kinalaman nun? Anong alam nun sa dagat? What does this show us? This show that the apostles were really giving their lives under the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving up their own authority over their lives. Ito yung sinasabi kong caution sa atin. Kasi ito yung temptation sa atin. Nasabihin natin sa mga buhay natin, I know who I am. I know what I want. I know what is good for me. Kaya walang magdidikta sa akin. Kahit pa ang aking pananampalataya hindi makakadikta sa gusto ko. Kung anong gusto ko, yun ang masusunod. That's very tempting. Lalong-lalo sa panahon natin ngayon. This has always been the clamor. This has always been that divisive presence that is slowly creeping into our lives. Kaya nga, slowly, you know, yung mga societies na dati talagang under the authority of our Lord, of our Christian faith, slowly nawawala. Limbawa na lamang, itong isang bansa sa Europe, they already gave in to the law of euthanasia. Yung hindi pa patay yung tao, yung, pero nahihirapan na, talagang intentionally papatayin para matapos na lang yung paghihirap. Hindi yan tanggap dati. Pero okay na. Abortion. Some countries that before were very strict on the thing sa application ng kanilang pananampalataya. Now it's okay with them already. Now the question is, what is its effect on us? Do we adhere also to that kind of authority? To our own authority? Sinasabi nila natin, mas maganda yun na, okay yun na. Kung anong gusto nila, gagawin na. Or do we adhere to the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ? An authority that comes 
from His love for us. A love that has only one mission, and that is to save us from our sins. Saang authority kaya tayo na mamalagi? Sana, sana, makita natin ang ating mahal na ina. Because she tells us only one thing. Hey, mga anak, dito sa anak ko, tayo sumunod sa kanyang otoridad, sa kanyang kapangyarihan, sa kanyang pagmamahal sa inyo. Magsitayo tayong lahat. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Father has given us new life in Christ Jesus, who came to heal, to forgive, and to offer His life for us. With confidence, we pray, Lord, heal your people. Lord, heal your people. May the Church, the sacrament of Christ's love, ever become the Lord's heart, hands and feet, that she may continue to love, to heal, and to travel, to announce the good news. We pray, Lord, heal your people. May government leaders, teachers, and other educators, media people, and social workers responsibly promote, defend, and preserve the sanctity and dignity of human life against the culture of violence and death. We pray, Lord, heal your people. May our celebration of Pro Life Sunday inspire us to hold on to the truth that all human life from the moment of conception to death, is sacred and to defend the sacredness of human life, marriage, and family, we pray. Lord, heal your people. May health care workers, through whom Christ continues to bless, heal, comfort, and lift up body and spirit, be aware of their special calling and perform their duties responsibly, we pray. Lord, heal your people. May consecrated persons continue on the ministry of mercy of Christ who went about doing good and healing to all. We pray. Lord, heal your people. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, heal your people. Listen to our prayers, Lord. May our communities be aware of the needs of many of your people and teach us to strengthen one another and carry one another's burden. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
sa isang tangkay na hubas, inuming nagbibigay lakas. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, He freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, He gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Socrates our Bishop, Fidelis' assistant bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Dominic and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, com for the kingdom, the power, and the glory yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary, the one who calls us to his authority of love. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, under my, my roof, roof, but only but say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. healed. Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bago po tayo magtapos ng ating misa, ako po ay magpapasalamat sa ating lector commentators, sa ating acolyte and Eucharistic ministers. Sa ating ushers, maraming salamat po. At sa inyong lahat na nakiisa sa misang ito, maraming maraming salamat. Ingat po tayo sa ating pag-uwi at nawabaunin niyo po ang pagpapala ng ating Panginoong Diyos sa pamamagitan ng ating mahal na ina, ang Birhen ng Santo Rosario ng Manawag. Muli po, maraming maraming salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. We all go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of our rosaries and other religious articles. Sa ating pong blessing o sa ating pagbabasbas, ang ating pong mga ministers ang lalapit sa atin. Kaya manatili lang po tayo sa ating mga upuan kung mayroon po tayong mga papabasbasan na mga religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards our brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that, in a sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, 
May these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles, our devotees and pilgrims, be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.